Hello there YouTube, I am Galadite74 and today I have a special one-off video for you guys. I highly, highly recommend you listen to at least this introduction portion before skipping to the battle I am showcasing today because otherwise this video will be a little confusing. This is not CGT Playoffs. This is PTL Season 6 Grand Finals. Now you're probably thinking, oh, congrats Galadite, you made a league that you're not uploading. Sorta. Yes, that is true. However, this game happened in January of 2021, and the regular season happened last year. Now you're probably wondering why I'm uploading it right now, 11 months later, when it's all out of the way. Uh, there's three reasons why I'm doing this. A, and easily the biggest reason, is my YouTube channel is meant to document my draft career. I don't have everything in my draft career on YouTube, but I have a lot of it. And I vowed to make sure that every finals game I made, made it onto YouTube. Uh, eight of them are currently up, and this is the ninth and only missing one. So that's why I wanted to throw it on YouTube. Uh, B, PTL Exposure. This is Season 6 Finals. Season 8 just concluded last week or two weeks ago. And uh, the next season will be starting right around when BDSP drops. So, you know, shout out to PTL. Really fun league. Uh, I'm an admin in there, even though I don't do anything. And finally, there's two to three weeks in between uh, now and when BDSP drops. And I have no content lined up. So this is an excuse to make a video in between then. So those were the three reasons why I'm uploading this battle now. Obviously it's been 11 months roughly since this battle has happened. So my mind isn't fully focused in on this team. I will try and explain this matchup and breakdown and hopefully you guys get some content out of it as well as some educational use. Because this is on Showdown and a post-com, I can kinda add more thoughts to it. So that's my long introduction, my long spiel, but that's very important into the reasoning why this whole video exists today, and I thought you would be interested in that. Uh, this will still be in chronological order. I have a finals playlist, and I will make sure to put this in order still, because the three finals recently that I've had uh, will go after this. Anyway, that's it for introductions. Our opponent is Tenkai. Uh, he was the Al... Uh, Bani uh, Obstagoons as his team name for this game and this playoff system was very long and very grueling as this was the fifth game in the playoff system. Uh, we won the four games prior so we never dropped to the losers bracket which was very awesome. This whole season was really actually pretty exciting. Again not on YouTube but uh, we had a rough start and then we climbed back. I don't think I'm going to talk about the team at the end just because you guys aren't connected to the team. No real point in doing it, so you guys will at least see it when we break down this team builder right now. So on screen, here's the team builder. Uh, his team, Tenkai's team, consists of Zeraora, Excadrill, Hippo, Togekiss, Nehaligo, Inteleon, Serena, Miltank, Senescore, Scrafty, and Chai Mecho. But my team... Here's my team, Mega Gyarados, Zapdos, Sylveon, Azelf, Cobalion, Nidoking, Sylvalli, Decidueye, Drudigan, Simiseer, and Turtwig as our mascot pick. Uh, so these are the two teams we're looking at together. I still have the notes from this, so hopefully I don't mess it up too much. What I expected to come consisted of Excadrill, Hippo, Kiss, Inteleon, Serena, and Scrafty. Uh, Scrafty is starting to become a kind of a mon that I am having hard times building for. I know my team was especially weak to sand, uh, which kind of is shocking considering the ways I can combat it. Uh, it was just still a nuisance for my team, and Inteleon was a big threat to my defense, if I recall correctly. So I remember in prep that, that was a big issue. Uh, Nihaligo could be annoying. One thing I liked about this matchup is that Zeraora isn't that big of a threat. I have really good defensive answers and a decent offensive one in this game. So at least I had that going for me in this matchup. And I did kind of have a clear win condition as my game plan for this time was to bring Nidoking to spread damage early 
uh, and Mega Gyarados can sort of break down and clean up this game. Uh, Scrafty is not known to stay healthy throughout a game unless it has rest, so if I can chip down Scrafty, uh, Gyarados can take advantage of the Inteleon that kind of, my, kind of beats my team. Finally, I also have a Silvalli Grass that I brought to this game that was meant to deal with the Sand Core and Trill and Hippo, and even kind of take on Inteleon. So that was kind of the whole game plan. Uh, you guys can break down the matchup a little bit more as you please, because again, don't remember all the details, but these are the notes that I wrote down. But what I brought to this game consists of Silvalli Grass, Cabalion, Nidoking, Mega Gyarados, Drudigan, and Zapdos. Once again, I will reiterate that this is not fully fresh in my mind, even after looking at the notes and game, so apologize if I miss any details. So Valley Grass is first. This Pokemon is defensive with Tailwind. A Tailwind gives me good forms of speed control just in case stuff like Zeraora is annoying. Uh, and Teleon as well. Uh, Nihiligo if it's speed boosting. All those things could be threats and Tailwind kind of negates that. Uh, Multi-attack. Uh, this is a really good defensive typing because it deals with the Zara Aura that is pressured already in this game and the Sand Core and that's Tenkai's uh, top three mons so right there that's some instant value which is pretty cool. I like this over Decidueye just because of the extra bulk and the speed was pretty nice. The ghost typing wasn't giving me anything in this game so I thought this was better uh, plus it's it's a good Zara switch in because knockoff doesn't do that much compared to if Decidueye was the answer. So that's why I have this Mon. Next is Cobalion. I love this Mon. Uh, this is Dual Stab, Swords Dance, Magnet Rise. Uh, this is kind of a, a greedy set, and the main reason I say that is because it's meant to set up on Hippo, but if Hippo has Body Press or Whirlwind, then it doesn't matter. However, the reason I don't mind this is because a part of me wants to believe that I can get rid of Hippo early. And I say that because while Sand is really good against my squad, Hippo himself is not really that great. So there's a small chance that Hippo could be let go early and he could go for a drill breaking uh, early game, which would kind of suck, but at least it would get rid of Hippo. And then this Cobalion could potentially go in. Speed tier is a little janky, but uh, I don't think it's that bad in this game. And it's a really good offensive answer to the Scrafty, as I'll explain why that's important in a sec. Next is Nidoking. This is our Assault Vest and Nihiligo answer. Dual Stab, Rock Slide, and Ice Beam. Uh, Rock Slide was for the Senna Scorch because it did more than Ancient Power, I believe. And Ice Beam was to hit the Togekiss and the Serena and something else because Sludge Wave hits both of them. Hippo, that's what it was. Jeez. Uh, AV, again, it's my main Nihiligo switch in. It also can handle Togekiss as well as the Serena to an extent. So, this is more of an offensive mon. It's just that extra bulk was really nice. The Life Orb doesn't help me out in too many situations. I think there was a few that it did, but Assault Vest was generally just a little bit better in this game. But it's meant to be used early just to spread as much damage as I can. The Salt Vest, again, will help out with that. Mega Gyarados is next. This is the reason why getting rid of Scrafty is so important, because this Gyarados is my endgame. A Dual Stab Taunt Dragon Dance. This is meant to set up on the Inteleon that could be choice locked into a water move. And at plus one, if Scrafty's gone or just not there, this Mon goes crazy. Miltank's matchup's not that great. Uh, Serena, I do need a little bit of chip on that. And I think I need to get the plus two to outspeed Drill, though that might not be an issue depending on who I'm setting up on. Uh, and Mega Gyarados has insane bulk anyway, so I can live any one hit from Drill. But at plus one, again, if Scrafty's gone, this goes crazy. If Scrafty is here, uh, it could be an issue because Intimidate Defensive really does shut this down. So my whole game plan does revolve around chipping that down early on. Same with the Serena. Next is Drudigan. Drudigan is defensive. I ran it defensive a lot throughout this season. Stealth Rock, Toxic, Earthquake, Gunk Shot. There's no Dragon Stab just because I didn't need it. This is another defensive answer to mons like the Zara Aura, who is mainly this is what it's mainly here for. Uh, the Drill. 
uh, what else? Nihiliko I have written down just because Earthquake one shots it. Uh, Mill Tank, Center Scorch, and Scrafty. Uh, Mons that can deal with that. If Scrafty comes, I fully expect it to be Intimidate and not Shed Skin. So once it's Toxic, really nice. Rocks are pretty helpful just to get some chip. And then Earthquake Gunk Shot was the best coverage. I do remember Poison coverage being really good in this game. So I, could, I think that's why Poison Fang's on Soul Valley. But just defensive answer, not the most important mon on this squad, but can still serve a role. Finally, we have Zapdos. This is defensive with Volt Switch, Heat Wave, Toxic, and Roost. Uh, remembering using Zapdos, this mon has insane 4 moveslot syndrome that kind of pissed me off, and this game was a little no different. This mon was very sus because it did allow in stuff like Zera for relatively free, a Nihiligo I wasn't a big fan of, and I also was not allowed to use Hurricane or Hidden Power, so the worst is Zapdos, hence why I don't have a flying move on this set, because I would otherwise. Uh, Heat Wave hits the uh, drill, so this is a secondary defensive answer to that thing. Uh, toxic, I think, was for Zera, just so I can Toxic Roost it, and Volt Switch does the pivot. Uh, again, it's kind of like Drudagun, it's just there to be annoying and maybe chip things down for the Gyarados, for the Cobalion late game that I'm sort of planning on going with. But that's going to wrap it up for this team builder. Hopefully I explained my thought process the best I could here. Uh, I want to mention that Mega Gyarados, uh, I've enjoyed using that mod. I remember Dragon Dance was... I wasn't really the most comfortable with going for Dragon Dance late game just because I felt like there was always a good answer to it. Uh, I remember with this team I went more like with the Cobalion endgame as often the playoffs a lot. Even stuff like Scarf Decidueye I brought uh, quite a bit. So this was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I felt like it was really good for the matchup. Uh, but we're going to jump into the battle, and I'm going to explain my thoughts throughout it. So here we go. Alright, here we are in the game. It feels like forever since I've said that, but here we are on a showdown postcom. This is PTL Season 6 Grand Finals. And uh, this is what Tenkai brought. This is basically what I expected. Uh, Nihaligo was a wild card here. There was a few other mons I could have seen coming, especially the Serena or the Togekiss I thought would come. But otherwise, this is what I expected. Leads either Nidoking or Drudigan, looking at this team. Uh, you're going to see here in a sec that I am going to lead Drudigan over the Nidoking. And the reason I did that is because if Hippo let off, uh, or Inteleon, uh, Drudigan would be better just because I can get up rocks or just get some chip damage. Uh, basically a way to not lose Nidoking turn 1. So that was sort of my thought process here. Uh, rocks are pretty nice too, just because Drill is the only spinner, and I don't expect uh, Drill to have spin in this game. So they lead off with Inteleon here, kind of whatever. I get up rocks as they focus energy, and this is the set I did actually expect Tenkai to bring. The issue, and I completely blew by it because I'm dumb, is my Mega Gyarados is not Mega yet. And Mega Gyarados, uh, even a crit surf from an Inteleon to that, doesn't do that much. But because I'm not mega and because I have Drudigan in, Ice Beam is the play here. And because I'm not mega, I don't have a switch in, I basically have to sack something. And you're going to see here, I choose Drudigan. Looking back, this was a pretty bad play, just because Drudigan looks so good in this game. Uh, it's good against Zara, can 1v1 Nihiligo, uh, can chip down Scrafty, and it's not that bad against the Sand Core. So, looking back, not a great first turn for me. And this is looking like a big threat. Turn 3, however, is worse. I send out Gyarados, right? I'm just going to Mega and Dragon Dance in this thing's face. Why not? Let's just do it. As he's going to U-turn and do 57% of damage. That is a huge mistake from my part. And the reason why is because I'm stupid. I forgot that, you know, with Focus Energy Scope Lens like this, it boosts just crits on every side, just on and including the physical side. So I was thinking, I, I was... U-turn if he has it or not, which I wasn't sure if he would considering it's focus energy set, 
but if he did, he's at minus one attack, it will do nothing. I forgot crit ignores that. So right there, that's really big. And um, another reason why it's big is because I lose my switch into this thing, and I lose my backup switch into Nihiligo, which is kind of a threat in the back. So I, I'm, I know I'm paused on this turn for a while, but this is like the biggest turn of the whole game. So that really sets me back quite a bit. As I did explain, I Dragon Danced, and Scrafty comes out here. I'm going to be at neutral. It's Intimidate. Uh, it's at 95%. I'm not doing any damage to this. So that's just wasted potential right there. I go out into Zapdos. Uh, Tenkai goes for the knockoff. That's a good play on his part, noticing that I don't want to give up Gyarados quite yet. So he makes a good play there. And I'm getting outplayed like crazy. I Toxic the Nihiligo. Uh, that sucks, I didn't want this thing in for free, so now I have to go into Nidoking. A good thing is he goes for rocks, the bad thing is Zapdos doesn't have boots, so that's going to become an issue. As Scrafty comes right back out, that's okay because I won chip on this. As we're going to see here, this is kind of mixed bulk, uh, some spit F investment, but I don't think it's fully. But getting that chip can potentially be nice for Gyarados later on. Just, again, because I lost my health, it's going to be a lot harder to set up now. But I will still look for opportunities. Here, I'm going to go back out into Zapdos, because it is my switch into this, as they reveal to be the Super Fang, as I believe they did run quite a bit in playoffs. I get Static, which is kind of nice, uh, so I do expect this thing to be a kind of like a stall breaker set. As Nihi comes back out and I have to Roost, just so I can switch in again and not die. Unfortunately, that means I have to make a switch in again, and I go into Nidoking. Tenkai here makes another really good play and goes for Psychic. That's really big because I wanted Nidoking to break in this game, and now I can't have it break because it took this big hit, and I don't want to risk switching into Gyarados because, let's say, they go for a different attack that can still knock out Nidoking. Uh, I don't want this thing getting a beast boost, and I don't know... Uh, this thing's item up to this actually no it's black sludge we did see that simply I didn't want to risk any of my other mons and giving this thing a boost especially a speed boost so I decided just to take the bullet and Nidoking King has to go down here so turn 11 we're definitely on the back foot it's not speed boost thank goodness so Kabalion can always revenge this however Kabalion still isn't in a prime position to break down this team as there is a hippo here and at this point, I'm thinking, I'm just going to have to go for it. If this thing has Body Press or Whirlwind, it's not that good, but I still have to just do it. I apologize if you can hear talking in the background. It's very loud downstairs. I Magnet Rise. I'm going to Sacred Sword this turn just to scout damage and see what the Zara wants to do. If they went for close combat, it had a roll to kill, but they go for Bulk Up. So bringing Sacred Sword over CC actually kind of worked out here just because it does around the same damage at plus one, and I get to keep my defenses. I did a calc here. There was a good chance I lived close combat, I think, so that's why I decided to stay in. As they go for Plasma Fist, I definitely live that, so I will be able to knock this thing out. So that's cool. We don't get 6 would but Kabalion's not in a spot to really do much anymore, as unfortunately, Inteleon comes back out. This mon exists, so I do have to sack off the Cobalion to this. I'm full in on this Mega Gyarados endgame, even though it doesn't look too hot. I have to go into Silvalli Grass. I could have went into Gyarados, but I like this a bit more. Uh, they U-turn. They get a you know crit with no focus energy. Uh, kind of salt in the wound, but realistically, I don't think it matters. I do go for Tailwind to give myself potentially more opportunities to set up. Uh, but unfortunately, I cannot switch in hard Mega Gyarados on this, so I have to play this annoying pivot game with this thing, as I still like Silvalli's health a bit here. Going to Zapdos, uh, they get paralyzed, that's cool. Uh, expecting them not to go into Drill, I'm going to Volt Switch this turn, as they go into Nihi, and that's kind of nice, I get a turn right for once. And we're, this is like my chance to get in Gyarados, because I still have one more turn of Tailwind. And this is the turn of the game, because I can Dragon Dance in front of this thing's face and potentially try and clean up, and or I can just attack this and get rid of it. 
Now the options weigh on both sides. Uh, obviously this is not a good spot because Tenkai has a lot of ways to still beat down my Gyarados at plus one. The biggest one being Scrafty. My thought is if I dr uh, Dragon Dance, I can potentially get a Paralysis or Waterfall Flinch and knock that thing out. Uh, the issue with this whole overall situation, no matter what I do, is that Drill and Sand still outspeeds plus one Gyarados. That's always going to be an issue. Uh, that's why I think Savali's health is still kind of helpful in the back, but at this point, I kind of need Tenkai to choke. Uh, if I go for Waterfall here, uh, I feel like it. I might kind of have to need to do that, because if I Dragon Dance and this thing kills me, the game is over. Like, that's it. So you're going to see here after this Nihiligo gets some Black Sludge Recovery that they're going to switch out in the Scrafty, uh, take the rocks, uh, Intimidate, I go for Waterfall. And it, you see it's not a two shot on the Scrafty. Uh, there is a chance I could flinch it, but I do just go for the Dragon Dance. They haven't shown a fighting move until now, they do. And that knocks out my Gyarados, and that's going to be the game. Uh, looking back at this, uh, I could still lower the diff here, but there's no way I can win this game. Once Nihaligo comes back and hits the field, uh, the game is already over. So we're just going to kind of watch out these turns a bit. I'll put it on normal. So uh, the Scrafty is going to take a reasonable amount of damage. Uh, knockoff does nothing. And he is going to actually give me the Scrafty, which is cool. So spoiler alert here. Uh, as this hippo is actually going to tank my multi-attack and knock me out and uh, We're going to win for no, we're, we're gonna lose for nothing to Tenkai in PTL season 6 grand finals uh, I say grand because there was a winners and a losers bracket. Uh, I didn't really even talk about that uh, We got through the winners bracket. We never dropped to the lower bracket So that was that made this playoff run kind of special. It was very long and unfortunately, again, we are going to be a finalist. We are not going to win this game. GG to Tenkai. I'm sure he's going to be shocked to see this 11 months after he won his championship. Again, two whole seasons have happened since this game. So it's very out of date. But I did still want to upload this for you guys. Still pretty cool, despite it being old news. Uh, I was pretty disappointed in how I played in this game. Uh, again, considering... Uh, this this run I had in PTL, I had a really rough start to this season, and I went on a huge winning streak. And I think, I personally believe I played really well up to this game, because this game was completely different than how kind of the rest of the season went. But I lost very fair, I lost fair and square. I could have made a lot of better plays, but Tenkai also made some really good plays to kind of establish control of this game. So big props to him in this one. Once again, GG, uh, it's been 11 months. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today. I tried to make it educational for you just cause uh, often in Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi games recently, I've been so focused in on the battle. I always focus on doing the battle first and not commentary. As here, because this is post-com, I can talk about it a bit more. And hopefully my insight was pretty helpful in explaining how I felt throughout this game and looking back at it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm not doing a postseason recap because this is the only video. Uh, maybe one day I'll stream, like I'll just do a stream where I kind of document my PTL season six run. Kind of doubt it. But for the final sake and for YouTube's sake, this video is complete. So I want to thank you guys for watching so much. Not sure what next week's one-off video will be. I'm going to decide it on the fly, and uh, without further ado, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.